Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Hinge Games live stream. All right. Hey, how's it going, guys? <sighs> okay, so what were we going to talk about today? Yeah, oh, I guess I posted that thing. We're talking about I uh, signed up for Steam, so you can't see our game on the Steam store, but we're registered with Steam, uh, filled out some tax documents. It's actually a really simple process. It's pretty cool. Cool. Just just all did all online, automatically filled out the form for me. We we've because we've done contracts, like Jacques has done contracts for American companies, and we've actually done some of these forms before because we have to basically there's special tax forms for doing um there's special tax forms for doing like uh for having income for in for being a company in Canada having income from the states. So there's <laughs> stuff stuff we've already done. Uh, so set that yeah. up and then as I was setting that up, I kind of went down a rabbit hole of like, oh, there's a plugin I can use the, to like host our own games and then join our own games. And I th th like if you had asked me this a week ago, I would have been like, yeah, that's on the chopping block, man. I, I don't have the skill set to do it, but it's all implemented. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. all implemented <laughs> weekend. and today. Wow. Uh, no, with all the stuff I all the stuff I didn't know how to do, I implemented over the weekend. Wow. Uh, and then everything else I had been putting off because there's a lot of like network replication stuff and a lot of dynamic things in our game, a lot of things that changed. Like the the best example I was talking about with some guys this afternoon is doors. Doors are tough <laughs> in any game. Yeah. yeah. That has, has synchronization problems. Doors are always super tough. <laughs> uh and but I got the door working. Basically, we have, nice. we have doors in our games, and depending on once you complete a quest, then that door should be open. And then if somebody else joins the game, how does that person's instance of the game know that the door is meant to be open? Well, I replicated all of the quest stuff so that now it checks when somebody joins the game, it sends them all the quest information, and then it checks, okay, what's supposed to be happening? And nice. in one case an NPC spawns, in another case a door opens, in another case is a push block in a specific position. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, that got that all working today. It's uh, funny, thing about, funny thing, thing about doors, doors is, is just not to Oh, yeah. yeah. Could you mute yourself in the Google Hangouts? Oh, jeez. <laughs> right. <laughs> me always doing that. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. You're getting the echo? The me yep. speaking in infinity? Okay, sorry about that. I said more of a reverb, but yes. Yeah, but I was saying, yeah, before, I not to go out too far off tangent, I just remember the first time I found out that doors were often used by you level designers as fake loading screens. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's tons of um, tons of tricks. We call them squeeze throughs on Tomb Raider, where it's yeah. squeeze through a narrow space. Anything you use yeah. to slow down the player is yeah. usually hiding some loading, especially doors, because so, uh, you can like. You could be like have somebody playing a little jostle animation trying to get the door yeah. open. My favorite is the <laughs> button just tapping. Streaming thing. everything, and then when it's all done streaming, you open the door. Yeah. The button tapping thing is like, come on, open up faster. Open up faster. Yeah. And then it turns out it's like, no, it doesn't matter how fast you press it. It's, it's loading mm -hmm. right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if you game, well, yeah. we gamified it though. So you thought yeah. you were having fun while you were waiting for loading. Yeah. Namco. <laughs> that's well, a, Namco that's a strong. That's a strong statement. <laughs> <laughs> Namco's. We had to figure out a way to get around Namco's trademark on the whole game during a loading screen thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, so, yeah. I don't know if you have uh, heard of that, but basically, Namco patented games during a loading screen, so no one was allowed to do a game during a loading screen. So what? Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's so only Namco games could have that. Bunch of bastards. It, it expired yeah. though. Yeah. But uh, I don't. I don't know if anybody bothered has bothered to implement it, it ever since it expired. Usually, we just try to minimize our, our hide loading screens. Yeah. You just like play a, a pre rendered cinematic, or 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 just have them jostle the door. I just remember the other <laughs> one was like, work. Anya, Anya, I need a way out of here. Right on it, Marcus. And then, of course, like you know, they'll play that little <laughs> cutting the door open animation. <laughs> That's like, it's like it's taking awfully long for Anya to come from that door. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a bar at the bottom showing yeah. how cut the door is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, 
time events for like did you ever play Resident Evil 5? Uh, uh, no, I played it. Boss, I think, okay, never mind. I think the, the only Resident Evil I played was at Phil's place. Oh yeah. <laughs> you remember that, Phil? Yeah, we played like one and two, I think. Yeah, on, on PS1. And uh controlled like shopping cart, terrible. And we Oh it's tank controls, it's brutal. Yeah. yeah. And and oh god, we were just because we weren't we we were in the hyperbolic time chamber, which is Ruben Phil's remember. parents' basement place that has <laughs> uh no windows and the lights are off. <laughs> but That's... we're all like good friends that were just joking the entire time, so there was no atmosphere to it. And we just yeah. started talking about how awesome it would be if the game had raptors with rocket packs. <laughs> <laughs> And then Tomb Raider had that. <laughs> Not the one you worked on. <laughs> no. It, the one I worked on had flaming katanas, although I think they might have cut that weapon. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the one where you tried to make the wolf gun? I did make a wolf gun, but it got cut too. <laughs> <laughs> Not a gun that shoots at wolves, a, a gun that launches wolves at your enemies. But they turn oh around God. and whenever they landed, they turn around and attack me. So... Wasn't working very well. It was just a prototype. And then and then was when it... the wolves are coming at you, you're like, oh no, and then you fire two more shots and suddenly there's three wolves. Was that supposed right, to be me. like the uh like the Half Life two uh what are those those sand crab thingies that you throw? Oh, eggs? it was just me messing around with the engine seeing oh, okay. what I could do. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was never realistically intended to be in the game. It was just me joking around. Like... A bit like a pheromone gun, shoot pheromones at things and watch all the wolves attack them. Oh, didn't they? Because they had something like that in the latest Jurassic Park movie where they like shoot a laser at a guy mm -hmm. with a gun and then they play a sound and then a raptor comes and kills the guy you're pointing a gun at. <laughs> Which seems like you're adding a lot of extra steps. <laughs> That's a lot of steps for just shoot a gun. <laughs> Like, well, no, you, you shoot the gun, and then, but it's it, then a raptor comes in and kills him, and it's like, but you have a gun pointed at him anyway. <laughs> yeah, you should have just shot the gun. <laughs> yeah. I think, so. that, I think it was one of those things like the in Gears of War, they had the Hammer of Dawn, and it was like, mm -hmm. you could only use it in an open space, and you'd have to like point it at them and lock it on for like five seconds mm -hmm. before the before like some satellite would shoot down a laser, and it looks cool. But the thing was, is like you actually have like a gun, but you know you could just shoot yeah, them with the hammer and dawn, though, because like there are guys that like you shoot with your guns and they do nothing. You need the hammer and yeah, dawn to take the, them out. Just the berserker, I think. But yeah, that was a bit of a cop out. Like they, they couldn't. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, games that kind of stuff. But it's but it maybe, definitely maybe it thing. definitely seems like it could have been used from a lot further away than like. Yeah basically melee range like that was close quarters combat so it's like mm -hmm. this laser that i could mark things with it's like lasers could go pretty far i gotta think though like with a like with dinosaur you'd want to use that on like a tank it's kind of wasted on like a human but if it's really it was a raptor though it was a raptor though it wasn't like a, a brontosaurus or a tyrannosaurus or something that could do something against a tank okay, well, that's... Like... Well, that's kind of useless, though. Yeah, it's only yeah. good against meat-based targets. Mm -hmm. Oh, but the, you know I what? Mean, I yeah, think we've gotten a bit off topic here. Let's try and get okay. back on. <laughs> yeah, <I was> going <laughs> well. Okay, so yeah, so lots of stuff. That's I was pretty interested getting the uh, getting everything working on um, the network, so you can connect to a game. You can host a game. You do nothing but host a game right now. Every time you start a session, it's automatically online. Uh, and it's, it is not private. So I'm going to have to do some, <laughs> some stuff. I'm trying to make it as streamlined as possible. So like, I'll, uh, I'll launch it right now, but basically we'll have to talk about like, so you go into the main menu and you have your first time you go in, it'll be like new game or, and then I guess, but just below that will be uh join game. And then below that will be the dungeon builder. And then mm -hmm. after you have a game, then the first option will be continue, then new game, then join game. But then I got to put a step in between new game or continue, or basically between selecting which save slot you're going to load or use mm -hmm. and selecting your characters so you can say whether or not you want this to be uh, offline 
online private or online public. And I'm trying to figure out a way to like make that as streamlined as possible because I I don't really want it to be uh like hammer watch is a good example but it's i don't think we need that many options if it's if we're not going to have like two player games you just make it private and then invite your friend uh you're not going to be able to select like one to four players or anything like that mm -hmm. and then uh yeah that's that's the big thing i'm trying to figure well i'll have to figure out uh, today yeah i got the door working i was really happy when i got that working i got it working about six o'clock the end of the day so that's good nice yeah and there's there's some weird loading issues i'll have to see if i can do it on stream it'll be interesting to see mm. oh yeah no i'm loading up two instances of the game right now it looks like <laughs> oh boy <laughs> see how this so goes. when you said you connected it like you can host a game is it you're using your computer as a host or is this hooking to the steam servers or what oh i'm using my computer as a host so you can see okay uh, you can see my screen right now yep so there's two this is two separate instances of the game there's but two standalone instances of the game so and if i use the thing is like if i use a controller it controls both of them <laughs> so i have to use a keyboard but like so <laughs> one those, i'll go oh those, those god rays so i updated the texture of the god rays by the way <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> <It's pretty good. laughs> yeah <laughs> It's mm -hmm. now a, uh, yeah, I have to do the effect too, but I yeah. guess we're going to eventually want to get around to change that load screen, We should probably do soon. Cause like, it's kind of an eyesore <laughs> loading yeah. up and having it look like a rainbow there, but you know, of the wrong effect. But yeah. We'll get there. <laughs> there you go. Let me just see. Yeah, it's fine. So fine for now. Probably change the camera to the center of dreams reach right when it got that thing finished. So. Look at those goats with the normal sized heads. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's just we'll we'll do the the old school view. Oh, and I also added a Discord button, so you can click a button and you'll get a link to our Discord chat. Oh, that's I like that from Apple oh, cool. Watch. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah so this a lot is now of people flooding in when that launches. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, well, we we got our friends chat, so we're okay. We're gonna have it'll be safe right now. So here, you can see uh, that door is open because I've completed a quest and I can now go down into Neat's dojo. Mm -hmm. And you can see as I move the character up and down, it's selecting different options. So there's vertical slice we won't have in the final game, but it'll go continue, new game, or join game. So now I'll join the game, and somehow that. <laughs> Clicked the Discord that button. Launch Discord. <laughs> yeah. Nice. All right. So, yeah, now searching for a server. I got Bjorn's game. I You can't enter a server name right now. What it does is it just takes whatever your character's name is, adds an apostrophe S, and then game. And that's the name Ooh. of the server. And then you can see which map I'm in and how many players are in the map. And then if you want to, oh, you nice. can press X to refresh or do time step. There we go. And then I could just select that, join the game. There is a weird bug though. I haven't tested this on package build, but it takes a long time for everything to load in on the clients. <laughs> that might be me. Or is this That's, where does the no, load? No, no, is no. it loading in Dreamreach? Yeah, it's loading in Dreamreach. It doesn't have anything to do with you. I think it's it's one of no. it could be a few things. It could be mm -hmm. the fact that um and you can see the dialogue's working too, because the dialogue is tied into the same, uh, yeah. like game state stuff that all of the uh, like the door and everything is. So characters should say, "There's um, there's two types of dialogue. There's like quest uh, critical dialogue, which this is, which is why it's the really? same dialogue. There's another bug I'll have to fix where there's random lines that'll pop up, and I'll do something for that. It shouldn't be too too big deal or anything, but." Uh, let's see, so there's two things that the loading thing could be though. One is it's the fact that I'm running this from the editor and I'm running two instances of the game. Oh yeah. We'll uh, so it's like just taking VR. extra time to load everything. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if this will happen to package builds. It might not. There's, there's some stuff I'm going to want to do where I will want to finish 
waiting for things to load in probably uh -huh. before you sp I spawn the player character because as you saw there like they drop through the ground yep uh and the other thing it could be is um there could be some networking things where it's it's the the state of what levels are loaded is just not getting sent right away so I haven't looked into that but it's basically like it sends a bunch of other information first and then it's like after a while it's like lazily being like oh yeah and this level's supposed to be loaded load that in oh yeah and this level's supposed to be loaded load that in and it's just taking extra time for that but after it loads in there is another bug with the cameras that like it should be following them but I, there's something wrong i'll have to take a look and see what's going on there but yeah is it just this location or is it uh well i think it's something to there. do with the camera volumes Okay. But yeah, it's something I'll have to debug. Okay. But yeah. Because I think, yeah, something's weird's going on where it's like something gets added to a volume. Like the, probably the players get added to a volume and then don't get removed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, there's that. And then there's stuff. Stuff I'll probably be doing tomorrow is like hooking up a lot of the player stuff. Because right now, you can see on the client screen, they both the characters look yeah. exactly the same. And it's because yeah. their uh, settings haven't been applied. Mm. Like one of them should have green hair. One of them, uh, I don't know if the other, what hair, color hair the other one should have, but it's obviously not set up. So I'll have to go and set that up. But that yeah. should be relatively easy. I can actually, there was something I was going to show. I'll go back to this. And. Funny because I was going to show <laughs> just the top left of that screen there. Yeah. <laughs> when yes. you're done. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, that's yeah, a I thing we were reading. Let me just find the. Uh... Quick yeah. question Is there any way for me to like shut off the audio in the actual game? Uh. Audio in the actual game. Uh, you can, if you yeah. right click on your speaker in Windows in the bottom uh, right corner, you can open the volume yeah. mixer and then you can turn down the volume for specific uh, applications. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. So I'll just go over this really quickly. So this is kind of the structure that Unreal has. So there's mm -hmm. game instances and each one of those is unique. Uh, to each, like there's a client and then the server and then another client. Mm -hmm. And so game instances, everything in that is unique. And this would be like, or well, I'll, I'll go on to some other stuff first. Uh, then there's the HUD, all that stuff is unique. The player controller, like the, that's kind of like what takes your inputs on the pad and sends them to the server. Those go from like one client to the server and another client to the server, but it's not shared between clients. Then the thing that I did today is I updated the game state, this down here, this is shared between the server and all the clients. So that's all the stuff that determines what doors should be open, what lines of dialogue should play. The next thing I'll be doing is updating the player state. So that'll be like health and what color your hair and skin is, what kind of armor you have and everything like that. So I'll be doing that tomorrow. Nice. nice. Yeah. And previously, you, uh... most of this was just handled in the game mode because I had only set things up for like single player and I wasn't wasn't doing as much as I should for multiplayer. I'd set up a lot of things so it's like actually pretty easy. A lot of what I'll be doing is just like there are variables that I'll just move into the player state for example and then I'll just reference them from the player state. So it's not like it's going to be using mostly the same logic but it's just like moving some variables around cuz yeah. that's the Where important thing. It's just like exactly like the variable of like what quest is complete so then when the client asks or because there's a bunch of checks that'll go through it's like when you walk into a trigger volume it checks is this quest complete so then on the client side it'll check is the quest complete and it'll actually have the information of what quests are complete so how are you going to handle like um loot and stuff like that loot and stuff like that so loot would be in the game state so specifically but... I guess there's there's a lot of things for loot. I guess we should talk about. Do you want to? Yeah. Well, is it is it going to be split? Is it going to be to the world? Is it going to be to the player? Is it going to be? 
Uh, it's going to be to the world. So like that. Well, there, there's a few different kinds of loot, and I guess yeah, all of them will be be shared throughout the world. So like, there's health drops that'll be shared between everybody. Uh, and then you know whoever picks it up gets the health. And a lot of that stuff, because basically, uh, for things, we'll go one at a time. So for health, for example, uh, basically when somebody walks into that, a lot of that logic will happen on the server. It won't necessarily happen on the client. And then, so it'll be like, the, it'll, the server will like, the, because the, the server knows where your player is. So when the player walks into the health on the server, then it updates the player state of that character to say it has more health now. And then that gets disseminated to all of the clients. Mm -hmm. uh, and then same thing with gold. It'll be like whoever gets the gold. And then with treasure chests, we still have that system where uh, it checks uh, which whose preferred item it is. So we'll have that preferences in player state of like what your preference is for each item. Uh, or each, like, you know, element. Do you like fire, medium armor, the opal variety or whatever? And then it'll just still go through that decision tree. Because a lot of that can still just happen on the server and then just get disseminated to the clients. Does that answer everything, Phil? Uh, yeah, I was more thinking, like, I don't know, we'd round into this problem before in Genshin Impact where mm. you couldn't affect the world if it was... Whoever was hosting the world, it was their world. Oh, right. Yeah. And okay. uh, even like items you couldn't pick up because they were mm -hmm. the host games items if they were quest yeah. items and mm -hmm. just yeah. a bunch oh. of weirdness. Yeah, we don't have to worry about that because so the thing with uh, Genshin Impact is there's like this is the way the world is laid out. There's like a finite amount of experience. So like when you there's a treasure chest that is in your world that will give you so much experience and so much currency of certain types. And other people can't open it while well, they're on your world because they don't want people double farming it. So it's like, all right, I'll get this treasure chest on my my game and then we'll go into Phil's game and then we'll get the same treasure chest and then we'll get double the experience. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, I, well, I think that's the rationale behind that. Because it is a gotcha game where they want you to run out of that stuff and then and then put in money to to pay for it right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then and because what you could also do is like all right well i'm going to start a bunch of different accounts and go get that treasure on each different accounts things like that depending, yeah. on, depending on how obsessed you got with the game but ours it's like, <laughs> it's like the kind of loot we have so we, we have gold all of it's isolated it's co-op we don't yeah the nice thing about it being co-op is we don't need to worry too much about people abusing it because it's co-op if somebody's abusing it then it's like well they're your friend, or you can just remove them from the game, but it's not necessary. The only way it's making your experience worse is by making it easier. It's not about, it's not like a, a competitive game where it's like, oh, suddenly they're kicking your ass because they've unlocked a bunch of stuff. It's like, well, no, they're they're helping you, so they're your yeah. life's easier. It's not as bad. Uh, but so, kinds of quests, the kind of stuff we have is it will all be on the server's game, uh, except for, I think, probably the equipment you have on you as a character. So, like, when you unlock a tome, it'll be unlocked in this game, but there will be nothing preventing any of the clients from opening a chest on the server's game, but that that totem will be on the server's, uh, in the server's save file. It won't c come back with you when you leave the game. Oh, uh, so certain items won't come back with your character. Yeah, that's how I think I want it to work. What about gear? Gear, yeah, like I said, so the gear you have equipped will stay with you. Uh, so okay. if you have, like, so you know, you get, just a, you get a badass helmet, then you keep that. Yeah. But then, if you find a tome, you have to go back to your own game and then find it again. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. But That'd the tomes okay, are, tech, the tomes will all be in the same places. So yeah. if you, uh, you go back to your own game and go for the tome. Uh, it should, uh, it, it, you'll know how to solve the puzzle and you'll know exactly where it is. Yeah. I guess it's just whoever's hosting progresses their world. Yeah. 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 Cause we don't really have, um, it's all drop in, drop out. 
it's mm -hmm. not like you join it's not like you join someone's server and then start a game you only join a game in progress is the way it's set up okay and it's like you you can court you the idea would be you if you want to play through a game together you coordinate with your friends and be like hey i'm gonna play now so you join and then once they've started the game you jump in and then you start playing the game together um, do you have like uh I guess like on the fly difficulty scaling for multiple players. I I can't remember if I've set that up specifically. There's I do have a difficulty component that changes stuff. I think at one point I'd have to I'd have to go and review it because uh, I think at one point I spawned more enemies, but that was really weird. And I haven't tested this in a long time, honestly. The multiplayer stuff. <laughs> Uh, so at one point I spawned a lot more enemies, but at that point it wasn't more fun. It was just combat was taking longer. Mm. Uh, and I think what I did, I think I, what I still do is I divide the experience by number of players. So if there's mm -hmm. four of you, you get a quarter of the experience and you level up slower. Um, I don't think it'll be, I'll have to take a look. I don't think it's going to be 100% dynamic or 100% responsive. The way I would probably do it is like if you're in a combat and somebody jumps in, nothing's going to change about that combat. But when you get to the next combat, it might be a bit different. Oh yeah, okay. So I'll probably end up doing something like that. But it's something oh. it's something I'll have to look at balancing and, and do a, maybe do a bit of research and play testing on. Because the part of it too is like I don't even know how much you actually need to change stuff. Yeah. It's like. I know with a lot of games like Diablo, they do have the difficulty scaling based on how many people are in the game, but did they have that for Castle Crashers? Or I don't know. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I think it was just really hard to do solo. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because the thing is, like, there's certain like there's certain things, like, so we have the big enemies, right? And a lot of it's done to get a certain feel. Like, so we have the, the smallest enemies, which generally you should be able to destroy in one hit. Uh, and then the big enemies should be able to kill you in one or two. And then it's like, well, how do I scale that for difficulty with more players, right? I guess it could be a couple of hits for the smaller guys, but then it, it really changes the feel. Mm. And, and that's one thing I don't like, well, because I guess you're outputting twice as much damage theoretically. So mm -hmm. it would make sense, but it should still feel a bit better. Yeah. Well, and for the smaller enemies, you just want to spawn more, I guess. Yeah, for the bigger yeah. enemies, just give them more HP. Mm -hmm. That that seems, but then it's it's one of those things where it just becomes like they take longer to kill. Well, actually, but there's four of you, so it's technically mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's the thing is like because I can four, I can make it right. so it's like it doesn't have to be flat, right? Because it could be multiplied yeah. by one point five, and then it's like you could you'll be mm -hmm. killing it faster because you're outputting roughly twice as much damage, but it's mm -hmm. still harder than it was initially. Because the other thing too is like in if there's a lot of projectiles like it'll be harder to avoid getting hit when there's multiple players too even even if i don't change anything just because yeah. the projectiles the are going in all sort of different <laughs> directions and there's just a better chance of you getting hit so it's like there's a decent chance i'd like to play test it and see like okay yeah is this it's gonna I, be a lot of on-screen chaos <laughs> yeah exactly sounds fun mm-hmm should be ways to make that like discernible, I guess, or readable. Mm -hmm. Oh, it'll be readable, but it's like because you know when you're strafing around in a certain direction, like let's say you're moving around mm -hmm. the the map clockwise. Yeah. Actually, here I'll, I'll 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 load up the map so I could be playing while we're talking about it instead of just looking at this chart. Yeah. Oh, we weren't even looking at the chart. Yeah, you're just looking at the load screen. This is this is the chart oh, I was screen. talking about that explains all oh. the, how everything is oh. broken up. Damn, I forgot to transfer to it. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, you can see there's the game instance. Let me just bring that back up. Mm -hmm. There's the game instance, which or game mode, which is just on the server, which is where it had a lot of the logic. Game state is now where it's spread across everything. So you see server in the middle, different clients. And then so yeah, game st game state. That's all a bunch of that stuff set up. Not 100 percent of it, but enough of it that the game is playable now. And then you have like pawn information. That's like the location stuff like that. Player state would be like health, name, appearance. Gets shared across it, all, everything. Controller. 
player controller for what inputs you're putting in. Yeah. And it's like, this is all handled in Unreal. This is how it's structured. So there's just, as long as I just move all my variables into the right place, everything just works. Now, what was I going to do? Oh, right. Yeah, I'll launch a single version of the game instead of... Uh... <laughs> instead of two at the same time. Yeah, let's do this. Real. Put that to one player. Okay. Yeah, so, because, like, when you're strafing around a room, going, like, counterclockwise around a room, you're kind of, you'll always be ahead of a lot of the bullets, right? That are going towards you. But if somebody's strafing ahead of you in the same direct, even if you're going in the same direction, then you might be behind, you might hit some of the bullets that were meant for them. And mm -hmm. if, if they're heading the opposite direction, then it's like, yeah, it's just going to be a lot more bullets flying in different directions rather than the same ones. Mm -hmm. trying to think of what else uh, that's it for difficulty did you want to because we're we were sharing did you want to talk about the tree for a bit sure okay i'll talk about the tree and the dirt pass <laughs> the dirt oh, pass yes things. yeah yeah the thing Let the me, thing uh... phil and i did not understand <laughs> <laughs> we were ch we're, yeah we were oh. talking about that just before the stream started is like i didn't understand yeah. it either but uh jacques and another artist i'll let you explain it but they were talking about how to do stuff feels like i didn't understand any of it and i'm like i didn't either yeah. he was speaking artist <laughs> yeah. i wasn't even communicating it well and he understood what i was saying like i was <laughs> <laughs> i was talking like Jim, i looked at what i wrote him i'm like wow how did he get the right answer from this <laughs> i was impressed <laughs> okay anyway so oh, uh you got leaves on it now yeah nice. you got leaves on this thing now okay so uh but I don't know if I had the God Rays sort of finished before. So the God Rays have kind of that Bifrost look to them. But if you notice the camera behavior as I go closer towards it, rather than like what we had in the uh, in the previous screenshots, if you walk through, you just it, you'd clip through them. But mm -hmm. now now the God Rays you uh, they fade out based on the camera distance. So that was kind of a, cool. uh, an interesting. And that's all built into the uh bruno's uber shader so that's all that behavior is all in the uber shader so i didn't have to do anything you just have to set the, the camera distance and then i put these kind of like one of these dust moat things but i didn't want them to look like dust moats because like i i made kind of conventional dust moats of like this puff but mm -hmm. it didn't look very nice so i actually have this multicolored red yellow and blue primary colored thing and they kind of gave them swirly patterns and yeah, it was kind of fun to do. The main thing was I was actually look, learning how to use this thing uh, over the past week. So now I can kind of do some effects, some basic effects. And of course, cool. there's the glow and everything like that. So I had to apply this glow. And I had to... I, I tried a bunch of things that I had in my uh, mood board, which were like symbols and like moons and things like that and circles. But then it stopped looking like a tree and started looking more like... I don't know some uh, some weird hieroglyphic thing, and it, it kind of looked like a mistake. So, it's <laughs> one thing not look like a mistake. <laughs> but yeah, so it's nice. I actually played around a lot with like going back to the textures, kind of doing artist. Uh, what, what do you call it? It's nitpicking crap, where we just kind of keep going back and trying to get some of the pixels right. And uh, some of the things I wanted was I actually wanted like the shadows to be a lot more blue and the light to be a lot more orange and kind of force that into the texture a bit so you can't really you can't really see it very well for, obviously from not from that angle but that's that's more or less what's there so i'll just shut it off we'll go to the editor maybe show you another angle of this thing so okay. if you hit it f11 go, it'll, it can go full screen oh f11 oh uh ask me later okay f11 there we go if i were to if I were to kind of remove the lighting from here, you'll see my texture. Oh, you can't even really see it still. But it kind of, it's it's blue underneath and kind of more orange on top, sort of teal underneath and orange on top. They're going with a very conventional 
lighting scheme, but I baked it into the shadows. And it's not, the thing I was kind of going for was like this sweet spot of kind of it making it look a bit more painterly, getting mm -hmm. sort of some of these. Uh, and that it, it's kind of funny because it's just a, a flat gray thing, but there's actually a lot more color in here than you than it kind of than you think. A lot of extra color work went into that thing. So it's even like the leaves are all they're a lot more colorful than it looks at first because it's kind of hidden and uh, not hidden, but uh, so. It's sort of consistent, let's say. So it kind of blends all into the sort of effect. So I'll, I'll, the next step is to maybe get this, get this thing on like a green pedestal, work out sort of the roads in the, in the village. And, uh, that's mm -hmm. oh, then there's the top of the, uh, the <laughs> it's a lot of, looks like you're a bit getting transported out of there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm to open the Bifrost. Yeah. One to, one to beam up. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, the second thing I wanted to show, um, my F11, get out of there, yeah, was the recent level. Don't, don't save that. Hey, dirt, because, uh, it's not just setting up the dirt, it's setting up a system for the entire dirt. Oh, oh, oh. getting, stop it. <laughs> okay, so now we have, oh boy, stop it, stop it, stop it. Oh yeah. You can, you can, uh, you can just put on God there's, mode if you want. There's a safe spot right here, right here. <laughs> So uh, what it is, is if you've noticed the dirt kind of accumulates all around the outer edge, it accumulates on the outside of the uh, outside of kind of each of these plates and the uh, kind of like it, it's there's a rhythm to how the dirt is laid out. So that's the first step is kind of getting the mask for this dirt. The other step, mm -hmm. it'll be to kind of play with the level. So it's still not like I find it'll still a bit of a distraction looking at this thing. So I'll have to. To mute down some of the colors, mute down everything to kind of make it a bit more. Um, wow, it's getting lighter. Okay. And I'll even raise the the dirt level on the on the, uh, the raise the brightness on the dirt as well. Well, I'm not really sure why it's it seems to be raising in value the longer you're in the room for. That's weird. But yeah, uh, well, probably uh, has something so, to do with the um, dynamic range on the camera adjusting yeah. or something. I'll play around with that. So uh, this was actually kind of a time-consuming process to set up, but once it's set up, it'll be easier to do afterwards. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if I want to go too deep into kind of the nitty-gritty of how this thing was set up. Sure. Uh, do you I want just... to try and explain it to me? And me, me and Phil will ask questions if we don't understand. Give it a shot. <laughs> sure. Okay. So there are a whole bunch of textures that build up this room. Like there's basically a uh, let's go to the unlit version. There's a uh, there's like this trim, there's the middle part, there's this other middle part, there's this circle, there's this circle, you know, there's the corner. So each piece of the, each piece of this kind of dungeon is a reusable part, is a reusable texture we're going to use throughout the entire dungeon. So, so they're like, they're like tiles, right? Yeah, they're tiles that we're kind of just reusing them and kind of getting more out of them. So I would show the other room, but I kind of ruined it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, until I get some more stuff done. So I'll, I'll just kind of go into the, the baking of. Okay, so you got the tiles. Now, what are you doing to them? This thing. So I had to, I'll go to the corner because it's a bit, bit of an easier thing to break. Okay, so. I don't know if I can fully explain. Steam clean to uh, get dirty based on how close it was to the edge. But we also kind of wanted it to be dirty within itself. And then we also kind of wanted this to affect the other tiles around it. Because it's it's higher up than, than kind of the, the wall trim. So what we did was we took this texture, our clean texture, and what I did was I kind of ran this, this dirt on it, more or less. Mm -hmm. So it's this dirt texture is overlaid over the entire thing. So what Scotty actually helped me do 
was uh, projected kind of across uh, multiple seams, I guess, multiple seams without causing a whole bunch of seams. So if you look closely, oh, it's okay. just like, it's a continuation of the same dirt pattern using mm -hmm. something that I had never heard about, but it's just very clever. Oh, okay. So now, uh, so now like there's no more seams in these, in these like dirt patches across different, uh, different texture tiles. Ah. So, that, so that's what he was talking about with the, the world. Mm -hmm. World right. scale dirt path. Yeah. Okay. World, about that. Yeah. world coordinates. Because yeah, it basically yeah, rather rather than the like position of the pixels on the texture being based on the object, it's actually based yeah. on the world position. Yeah. So ah, I see. Okay. And so what I had to do to get this sort of baked in there was I had to oh geez, how do I show this? Usually, when you, when you do a presentation of this, you actually have a whole bunch of like renders of leading up to the entire thing to, to fully understand it. But uh, what I had to do, oh god, I should have opened up Max before. Was I, <laughs> I created? <laughs> yeah. So uh, the first thing we had was each each of these uh, textures has something called an ambient occlusion. Uh, let me see if I can open this up again. Browse. Uh, and the ambient occlusion is this texture here. So this sort of kind of gives us a good sense of what's higher and what's kind of areas that should be grimier or what's darker. So if you kind of look in, I guess, in this area, all the dirt kind of affects where it's darker, like noticeably here, noticeably here, and then uh, in between the bricks and things like that. So that's kind of where the kind of would naturally, I guess, occur there. And then uh, the second thing I did was for the entire room, I, where's my max, max opening. Yeah. So I, I played around with a, uh, another map called the height map, but I decided to cut it because I think this is going to get just way too heavy. So the height map, what it did was it actually physically elevated up this corner piece over the entire thing, but the it was a pretty minimal payoff for a very very heavy computation mm -hmm. so in the end it probably wasn't worth it for us to do it so i just kind of scrapped it okay, um i still have to work out a few kinks because we were Pardon doing me? the parallax stuff before right Is yeah so i cut the parallax right. yeah okay. i cut the parallax for that reason yeah so i got a few uh like you can see kind of i got a, an issue here i got a fix with the uvs there's a little seam there because the doorway has like a little lip so as we get doors, I'm going to kind of swap this texture out with a uh, another piece. It's another door material. Where the heck is it? Uh, door. Do I have it here? I do not. Material. Door. Door trim. I don't have. Oh. No, I don't have it. There's going to be like a every doorway is going to have like another kind of lip, I guess. Mm -hmm. So uh, this will be the base, but then as we have like a door piece, we're going to float another piece of geometry on top of that. So is my max open yet? Yes, perfect. Okay. So I will show the making of how I sort of generated the room ambient occlusion because it's a bit of a hacky way of doing it. There's several ways to do it, and Scotty was he the the guy the friend who's helping us kind of figure this out who's like a professional. Uh, okay, so this is my floor texture, but if I were to unhide everything, what I did was I kind of created the different levels of, you guys, can you guys sort of make sense of this? Yeah, yeah. It's so just, like basically yeah, the, yeah. The, the metal stuff yeah. that was sort of like standing out, you just kind of like... Yeah, so did I, that I, I did that, go. yeah, but in hindsight, because I had all of these things, I probably should have actually just used the original and then gotten a more accurate thing, but that I think would have costed a bit too much i think because this is a like you just did all this to, to give it sort of an embossed feel oh uh, no so what i did that was to bait you know, i should have opened a photoshop too <laughs> I don't know. but yeah but I, I i see that it's like a 3d model there but like what's the point yeah. if it's a 2d texture okay so what i did was i, I used something called a skylight and i would render it but it take, took like two hours to bake was i i simulated what kind of that lighting would look like on a uh, 3D model like this. 
Or let me kind of show, you know, probably even show it in the Marta Center a lot quicker. And recent floor. So do you see how it got baked like that? This is kind of, um, let's show the high, high res. So if you see this, what I did is I baked this onto a flat plane. So okay, it, it looks like this when it was baked. So I got the walls in there. I got the different, you know, the different baked areas. And obviously it's, it's maybe the balancing isn't the greatest. Maybe I could probably re redo that, re redo another bake of maybe playing with a, the levels a bit nicer so that it's not, not this exaggerated. I, I kind of wanted to just see it more or less, but I could probably make it a bit more subtle. So everything that's at this point uh, higher up is, is uh, obviously more white and everything that's just a lot more recessed is dark. And because this got too many, this got too many, uh, it was a little too recessed that it just got black. So the problem with it is, is when I go back to Unreal, it's just, it's relatively black. So I had to kind of figure out ways to kind of artificially raise it, but this was all just darker, darker, darker. And uh, so, yeah, I'm uh, I'm probably going to do a rebake of this thing just with lower levels, just a little more. Uh, so the, so the dark areas are where there's more dirt. Yeah. So we're basically okay. using it to create like shadows of occlusion. Like basically the way to think of the occlusion is if you were to use like a particle ray and the particle bounced around inside of uh hold on, let me go back to Marmoset for a sec. Uh, where's my Marmoset viewer? Well, basically the way ambient so, occlusion works is yeah. is basically there's places where there's shadow. It yeah. shadow actually pools a lot more because there's less places for yeah. the light to come in and bounce from. Yeah. Yeah, so if the light kind of goes in and bounces around everywhere, it would actually hit the more open areas more regularly and hit the creviced areas a lot less, right? So, mm -hmm. because that's the theory behind how uh, ambient occlusion would work. So this is yeah. kind of how we did it. And uh, this is actually a nice starting point for the dirt mask because then it kind of, mm -hmm. then you get your different levels. But I think I I should probably redo it a little more subtle because it's a little too, uh, it's a little too much. <laughs> it's a little too much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is, is so, that uh, just out of curiosity? Is that something like the dirt level we could, is that something we could play around with from room to room? Like, oh, this room's a lot dirtier than another room? Um, possibly. That's actually what something that Scotty brought up where, um, mm -hmm. we should be able to. So this room, I was going to kind of like leave it as this and then build a bunch of functions and then we could play with the levels of the dirt. So kind of going back to, oh God, where's that corner shader? Uh, let's see if I can do this in real time. So, so this elaborate system you set up yeah. to do this, yeah. now you can do this on any floor and uh, instantly, instantly make yourself a dirt mask. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the thing was, is let's say, let's start this like 25. Let's see if I can update the corner real time with the ambient occlusion. So do we want the ambient occlusion to show up more. Well, let's go, point, that wasn't even enough. Let's go like 0. 0.8. Yeah, something, so can kind uh, of see the dirt building up. Hmm. Yeah. So something that actually, we, should, we, we will try to do this on stream really quick. Can you select uh, that texture or that shader in the uh, asset browser? Uh, yeah, it's right yeah, here. Right, right click on it and make it a material instance or make a material instance yeah. of that. Uh, very, right at the top, yeah. create material uh, instance. Very top. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then if you apply this material instance to that uh, object. Yeah. Hold on, let's go back to the dungeon object. It would have to, okay. Uh, environments, dungeons. This will actually save you a ton of time if you use if you set stuff up this way. Yeah, I know, but I, I have to I have to get the functions made properly so that we have the proper rollout of everything. Because yeah. uh, I didn't have like there's basically nothing like this is so sparse. There's nothing mm -hmm. in here, so I have to kind no, of do, Jack, just trust me. Just trust me. Just let's yeah. one step at a time. I'll, I'll you'll see why. All right. All right. Uh, which texture was it? It's the corners highlight. Nope, that's the middle. 
get to the corners. Okay, there you go. And then like that. Oh, well, that's the parent. You want to select, Browse, yeah. right, and then we'll go like that. Like that. Okay. okay. So now you're using the material instance. Yeah. If you create a parameter uh, mm -hmm. for that setting in, I guess, in the parent. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I was going to do all this stuff. Yeah. Eventually. But <laughs> if you adjust the parameter uh, yeah. on the instance, you see it in mm -hmm. real time. Like you don't need to hit apply or anything oh, yeah. like that. You can just slide yeah. it and see it yeah. frame by frame change. Not vector parameter. What was it? You want scalar uh, parameter. Scalar parameter, right? Scalar parameter. Let's go. Uh, let's call this min. min clamp. Make another one. Max clamp. what we call max clamp. Some clamp. Max. Come on. And so main clamp, max clamp. So it's both at zero. Max should be one. Yeah, and so, see, like so now you don't have to apply it every time. It's just like boom, and you could even yeah. like drag the slider and see it change in real time. Yeah, it's so much faster, and you can even while the yeah. game is running, uh, you can change that parameter. Yeah. So you could be playing the game, get to a level, and then drip slide that parameter while the game is running. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we were going to eventually make this, but I think because mm -hmm. it's the same thing repeated across every single texture, it's easier to kind of make. A singular function that does all of this with the dirt map in there and then mm -hmm. kind of roll that out as as one thing and then kind of repeat other than kind of like make doing what i did which is make it for each time but this mm -hmm. is just kind of to make it for and this was the old deprecated uh parallax mm -hmm. occlusion mapping that it just it's not attached yeah. to anything anymore just because it was screwing everything up uh, i could see yeah. if bruno could figure out a way to put it back in or bruno can point me to but it, basically with this stuff doesn't work well with this dirt map pass mm -hmm. yeah but yeah uh we're, we're, the, the plan was to have all of these eventually in here with a lot more settings min max clamping mm -hmm. for pretty much all because like that's just one of like 20 min max clamps that we're going to have to do for each material mm -hmm. so that's the yeah. m inclusion one and then we have another one for the uh uh the level of occlusion from the dirt i pass i guess so if i were to make this like uh like 0.5 save it it's not real then we're gonna get like a lot more dirt coming from like the out outer walls so and then we have another one for like the the type the type of dirt like it's just there's a lot more control that we're gonna have to put into it uh, and of course, then we want to have like the roughness control, and we also want to have like the the uh, oh crap, removed it. But I, I also wanted to have like the uh, the color multiplication on top of just the albedo. So yeah, there's a lot more control options you want to have in there, and then we're just going to kind of roll it out as the Uber environment shader, and okay. or the dungeon shader, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, the plan was to do all that eventually. <laughs> cool. Yes. Yeah, no, I just found for tuning it, like, uh, I'd much yeah. rather have the, uh, the, use the material oh, sure. instance and see it update oh, dynamically, because oh. I was doing some stuff like that where I was like, oh, punching yeah. in a number, compile, wait, see how, and then see mm -hmm. how it looks. Oh, no, not quite right. Do that again. Yeah. yeah, for sure, for sure. But yeah, this was just for the, the setup side of it. Once this is all done, we're going to start breaking this up into smaller functions and then reusing it mm -hmm. so it's not loading up each and every single time. Yeah, cool. And I think the nice thing is, is I could probably take this dirt and swap it with the snow texture, and then we'll be yeah. able to kind of put this on our snowy level. Then I'll be able to do it for the desert. Like if we have a, and the nice thing about kind of this dungeon is I could make it a snow dungeon, like just by swapping these this texture out. Then I can make it a sand dungeon for the 
So oh. that one, let me level it, then I could swap it out for yeah, anything kind of like that. Moss I, or something, yeah. Yeah, I forgot though. Do we? Does the floor ever get wet? Uh, yeah, there's I don't... the wet floors. <laughs> there's. But did you need them to get darker and everything like that? I honestly don't mind if they don't. Um, but because yeah. we do have the fountains and stuff like that that spray up water yeah. and spray water and things like that. Mm -hmm. Because that, that that's, should be easy to do in here, like once you got yeah. once you yeah. have everything, yeah. Because it's just about making another function. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, yeah, the funny thing is, is like that. Uh, well, the thing the, too uh, is like I, the the reason I I wouldn't mind is because because like if it's if it's like let's say it's the fountain going off, mm -hmm. you would expect it yeah. to get wet in one localized area, not yeah. the entire thing. Yeah, which I imagine would be a so bit more that might be a. Yeah, we might have to do something yeah. with a like a what's it called a a uh, projector because if you want it to kind of kind of be like a blob, you kind mm -hmm. of want that area to get darker in the diffuse, and then kind of like a lot more level for the shininess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, Could we'll um, so, can you remove or remove parts of that texture on the fly? Uh. Like remove it? No, because they're actually it's actually modeled in. Okay, so, so it's I, it's part of the model now. So the thing was though, just to increase the variety, was I was going to be able to swap this texture, the brick texture, and the circles. So I could swap those and have you could have different circle textures, and like we were going to have like a database of a whole bunch of different circles to to either randomize or swap between, mm -hmm. and then have a whole bunch of different like middle tiles, a whole bunch of trim tiles, because like. The the trim I could just change completely and, and it'll be fine as long as it adheres to this shape. The corner, same thing. I could I could make a whole other trim for the corner as long as it adhere, adheres to this shape. So mm -hmm. that was kind of the, the setup for this, where um all of these different kind of textures would have their own sort of uh swappable component to it. So any kind of variety, it would still be sort of this layout, but it would be like a swap a swapped uh, texture i guess to to get okay. a variety yeah i was so, just thinking because like mm -hmm. you've got you've got like i don't know the fan or like the spin attack or there's yeah. water or yeah maybe that should clean specific parts of the floor <laughs> but oh i <laughs> i don't know if that's gonna be <laughs> i don't know if we're gonna do that <laughs> but if it's baked into it yeah there's no way yeah well yeah. It, it, the thing is like on like Based on the stuff we've shown, like, can you go back to that material instance? Yeah, sure. With the with the slider, the thing is, yeah. those oh, yeah. values, like the max clamp and stuff, we can yeah. change those dynamically in real time. Yeah, yeah. but there's a cost. <laughs> so <laughs> this this is one optimization. I think we'll 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 bite the bullet here and be like, yeah, we won't we won't make those dynamic. Yeah. The, the other thing is I'm the only artist working on this thing and having more of these things is just more things for me to tweak, which means you're going to get less art for the rest of the game. So, Yeah, I it, wouldn't even put dirt on yeah. the floors if it was me. Yeah, it's <laughs> dirt's on the floors. Let's, let's just, we're done with it. Let's move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would have so just I, I had probably, shiny floors. <laughs> I'll probably do like a redo a pass because like right, I think the big issue is like the walls, it should have the most around the walls and just kind of go towards like nothing towards mm -hmm. the center. And then these should these should be a lot more subtle. So I'll probably have to well, I think the other thing uh, yeah. like that I do remember from your conversation with Scotty is like, so because there's not gonna be dirt on the walls, right? Or what what yeah. are we doing for that? Oh no, there's gonna be dirt on no, okay, so there's gonna be dirt on the walls, but it'll be another projector uh it's, it'll be another shader right because mm -hmm. we're not doing an xyz mm -hmm. so because yeah, it's just be projected better, down yeah it'll just be project, projected in a single direction so i think that's fine yeah i don't need, really need dirt on the walls either i mean i guess because the other thing like because the way I, i'm just thinking of the walls as they are now where it's just a flat plane mm -hmm. but you could have yeah. a small like lip at the bottom that's like 45 degrees and then curves up so and then you could have a bit of dirt on that forty-five degree angle that would still probably look okay. Yeah, I'm I'm not too worried okay. about the walls to be honest. Uh, we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But I I don't yeah maybe. Because the other thing is I could just make some dirt in there I guess. Yeah, and because well, they're all going to be the only thing I'm thinking. Anyway. The only reason I bring it up is yeah. just it 
like and, and again i'm thinking of the walls as they are yeah. now where it's just this yeah. dirt Flat and then plate. clean stone yeah which, which well, might be I, I, if if depending on how the edge them. looks if it's too crisp it'll yeah. look might look a bit odd but i it, given how far away from the camera it is um, I well no I, I mean i can i can yeah i can probably bake something in into the textures as well uh do i have a so i had kind of like a mock-up wall i was working on before i didn't really show it but um i don't think you're gonna have to worry too much because it'll have enough uh it's gonna have like enough detailing on it scene converter what the heck is scene converter okay there we go so like the walls are going to okay. be sort of set up to have a lot more stuff in them so this is just kind of like a, a gray box mock-up and this was mm -hmm. going to be kind of like my door that that goes you know shink or shink or something i don't know mm -hmm. which direction or it goes into the ground right <laughs> Boom. Yeah. no it goes up support colors it goes up. okay yeah i have that in All the right. game and working now yeah that's true i haven't played that the dungeon since i've just been working on the art <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so that's, uh, I'm not too worried about there not being dirt there because like, you know, maybe mm. the dirt doesn't really get there kind of just, you know, yeah. maybe a little bit. I, I mean, I could just put that in the texture too. And because like, this is its own isolated thing. This is its own mm. isolated thing. I, you generally don't get dirt like in corners of walls, if you know what mm. I mean? Like if you look around, like at least on my house, there's dust in the corner, but there's not like dust you know, on the wall. No, 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 yeah. Like, I wasn't thinking yeah. on the wall. I was just thinking, like, because we don't want a hard edge between, like, dirt and nothing. Oh, no, actually, it's fine. It's like, yeah. dirt and nothing. Okay. Usually, yeah, for if it's a wall, why not? Yeah, I know. It should be okay. So, yeah, uh, it'll be something like this. Oh, and, yeah, here's the uh, the oh, door cool. lip that I'm talking about, yeah. Still haven't put that in yet, but that'll be kind of when we do the... I, I don't know if there's any kind of, like, logic, but I guess when I have the... I'll attach this to the, the hallway, I guess, mm. the corridor. So if yep. you have a corridor, it'll have that lip on top of it. Yep. Yeah, yeah cool. that's easy to add in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll just be in the geo too, right? So, mm -hmm. and, uh, oh, what the heck? Got a weird normal map on there. Yeah. But yeah, that's, uh, that's what I've been working on. Getting this stuff looking, working, functioning. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, and then I, good, I guess, man. uh, yeah, I'd have to get a, like an ambient occlusion kind of baked around the corner here, so it'll it'll sort of match that. Ooh. It'll just kind of go from dirt, but mm -hmm. because it's sort of elevated, it can also still have like the uh, look different. But yeah, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it so far. So uh, it's just I, I know that the environment I was working on it, I didn't realize how distracting it was going to look without the dirt on it. But now that now that I'm working on it, now I realize, oh my god, I need to play with these levels because that gold is really distracting. I had to like mute that down quite a bit, and then I'm like, oh, you know what? Yeah. It goes from like this bright color to that bright to that dark color. It's like maybe I need to level these out a lot more. So I think I'll probably just take a probably do something where I'll clamp it towards like a gray. Uh, but yeah, I'll clamp the levels, I guess, to be a lot more even. So. And I'll do that across yeah. all the textures so that nothing's too dark. Well, the edges can be, but I think it's more like just the uh, the play area. That's the area that you kind of want to have, especially this is this middle part is like a big culprit mm. for kind of uh, when when I'm watching you do the playthroughs. Like it's it's a very kind of distracting floor pattern. So trying to get less distracting. The thing is like kind of uh, the... I don't know because like but as I'm playing, it do, it does yeah. it isn't that distracting. Like when I'm not focusing on it, it isn't that distracting. Yeah. Like the are. Yeah. The the stuff we have for projectiles and enemies and everything yeah. is mm -hmm. contrast with it enough that it's easy for me to focus on like their projectiles and their movements and yeah. stuff like that. For a puzzle and but but we don't use this for the puzzle room anyway. Yeah. For a puzzle it might be a bit if you're trying to yeah, discern a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And it could be misleading as well if there's like, you know, patterns on the floor that yeah. players think, oh, this must have something to do with the puzzle, but it doesn't. <laughs> but we have a completely yeah. different uh floor for the puzzle rooms anyway. So yeah. So I, I know a lot of like my favorite like game, games I was using as reference do have like do have a lot of these sort of like floors with a lot of patterns in them. Mm -hmm. But and then, then you just do other things. Like if you can tell, like this is almost all like the same mm -hmm. tone, right? The same color. Uh Diablo 2 does a lot of that. So does like and same with this thing. Whoops. Kind of that screenshot. Whoa. Yeah, it's a lot of these screenshots. The floor is a lot more kind of uh all over the place mm. and even like the lost arc and a lot of uh 
uh, Diablo as well. And it's not as distracting as long as you kind of clamp the value and bring it down. So it's mm -hmm. kind of a darker value. And then having the, the players kind of pop out with their shininess and their brighter brighter values and like that. So I think for dungeons, it's uh, it's kind of important to kind of have them almost flat and or like monotone mm -hmm. and uh, just mm -hmm. a little, lot darker. But you, I mean, you can't be quite detailed. Like, because like we, we did that. I don't think they... Because it's all mm -hmm. sort of a relative scale, right? Like, if yeah. you look at those characters in, in a lot of the screenshots, those the yeah. characters themselves are a lot more toned down than our characters, than the colors on our characters mm -hmm. as well, too, mm -hmm. right? So because yeah. our characters have popped that much more, our floor mm -hmm. can pop a bit more, too. Yeah. Because the, the delta true, between true, the floor sure. and the characters is still... Yeah. there right <laughs> yeah. that's da that's dangerous if someone's got a floor that fancy i'm gonna think it says it's got to be special for some reason <laughs> yeah so the thing is i don't necessarily want to have like a, a monochromatic drab you know floor like that but that does help to read a little bit better i find mm -hmm. like having it so it, it's more about i gotta hate saying this but finding the balance yeah, yeah. <laughs> because the thing too, like I'll say, with with our game, like there's, I think, in terms of like readability and stuff like that, our, yeah. and I mean we're still using a lot of placeholder effects and things. Yeah, yeah. Uh so they're they're pretty big. I think this matters a lot more in Dreams Reach per se than the dungeons, considering yeah. what happens in the dungeons and the floor we're using for the puzzles. Because like it's going to be yeah. empty, empty rooms, and that are full of boxes mm -hmm. and have towers and stuff like that. But it's not necessarily yeah. going to be, um, like a lot of the other stuff too. Like it, like there's hallways you're going down and stuff like that. Yeah, ours it's very clear where the where the walls are, where the room ends, yeah. where the hallways are to go to the next room and stuff like that. So a lot of my favorite games did have a lot of these sorts of things, like a uh, floor decor. Uh, and, and the main thing is like the top down view. It's like it's 90% floor. Like we're going to get mm -hmm. most of our visual identity from the floor. So it, we can't make it just look, you know, drab in one tone. Because yeah. like it'll just look like all these other games. So it's 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 about, I, I think I've, I I need to tone it down a little bit, but it doesn't have to go like full on muted, right? Yeah. It doesn't yeah. have to become this, right? Well, the, Maybe the definitely, room? like one yeah. of the things I do like about the dirt pass compared to how it was before is basically it looked yeah. like they had just had the cleaning crew in there with some Lysol yeah. and it just yeah. like polished everything down. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, probably, I'll probably remove the metal from this and just kind of make it like a stone. I think that's one of the only differences I'll do because I find that this being metal just kind of looks like a sphere in the middle of the middle of the room. And well, it really, looks, it really looks like yeah. a secret. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> looks like that box is like, gonna come out of the ground, and I have to fucking push yeah. it around. <laughs> mm -hmm. God of War, like, yeah, got it. So I, I can, I can, I'll probably tone down the dirt on these edges and just kind of have it more like on the outside, going to the inside, kind of thing. More in the corners, I would say, and then mm -hmm. kind of like fading out towards the middle. It'll be a it lot also, more. Like, this stuff will be a lot more subtle. It also looks like that thing has been moving yeah. and nothing else in the room has yeah because <laughs> there's no dust the, yeah. on it yeah <laughs> yeah that's i haven't got around to that yet oh i got a weird uh uv issue here mm. i gotta fix that Nah, you know mm. that's one of those you know it's like ikea it's like the bubbles <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> makes it unique yeah <laughs> cool you know it's handmade that's how you know it's handmade yeah <laughs> Oh, hold on, Scott. I gotta. My cat's going crazy and wake up the baby. <laughs> okay. Actually, yeah, hold on. I'll, I'll switch to play a bit of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. So. So, wait, what's going on? Why am I not? There we go. That's what I wanted. <laughs> Artist with an empty chair. <laughs> Artist with an empty chair. It's just me. It's just me now. <laughs> All right. So, Dungeon Builder. That's something I have not done, which might be a bit of an issue. Like, I want to go down to the dungeon and dungeon builder and check out the way the floors look on my build, because this is obviously without Jock's work. So oh, yeah, how's it going to work in multiplayer when one person enters a building? Uh, so, like, you mean like going down in, into a dungeon? Well, what just happened there? Well, Sorry about that. No, like, say you're in Dreams Reach, 
-hmm. Yeah. Is this, are you planning for like the multiplayer to like rubber band people's like, uh, like they can't go off screen or are they going to be on the same screen? Like, can you go into buildings separate from your other teammates? Oh man, I just broke the menu. It's bad. <laughs> uh, no, so uh, let me just load up the dungeon builder real quick. Because that should be the easiest way to demonstrate this. Basically, uh, so the only building that you can go inside is the dojo, and that's basically just a dungeon. And the way the dungeons work is all the players have to be at the entrance, and then it triggers kind of like a little scripted event where the like camera zooms in and everybody runs down. Okay. So if anybody's like lingering, it, just like in Hammerwatch where you have to all be at the exits in yeah, order yeah. To, to go through. Yeah, I was just thinking about um, Four Swords. Because mm -hmm. you have separate screens, people can go in those little caves and shops and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I guess yeah. you're going to keep everybody on screen. Yep, everybody, everybody's always on screen together. Okay. I guess they can get separate shop menus, though, and stuff. Ugh, as it's planned right you... now, like, even the shop is in world, so basically one person interacts with the shop at a time. So am I seeing his shop UI at the same time as he opens it? Oh, when we're doing networked multiplayer. Yeah, I hadn't actually thought about that. Uh, that's that's the way it would probably work at this point, but I guess it doesn't need to. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it makes sense if you're doing couch co-op, because mm -hmm. there's only so much screen real estate. But if, yeah, if you're doing online multiplayer, if you're in the mm -hmm. shop, I want to be in the shop too, and I want my own menu. and Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that could. I don't see why it wouldn't, because a lot of that UI stuff is basically separate. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Let's check out the old way. Yeah, so basically, like, if there were any stragglers there, it wouldn't zoom in or it wouldn't, like, have the iris come in. Yeah. And then start the thing going downstairs. This usually happens a lot faster, but since I'm playing <laughs> an editor... Scott, yeah. but I, I put in a bunch of stuff to save it. So actually, I'll try to run out and run back down. It'll be a lot faster. Similar to that. We can see Similar the old to shiny floors too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This one, this one, you can keep shiny. Although we might want it because basically, what happens is when you complete it, it dims and dulls. Uh, so that way, if you're walking past a dungeon you've already completed, you'll know it's already been completed. Yeah, uh, nice and shiny. Yeah. Very shiny. It's the combat room. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like, uh, let me go back out. This. So, if I. Combat. All right, yeah. So, like, when I'm fighting, well, and I guess that's he has a placeholder texture. So, let me try something that doesn't have a uh, proxy mesh. Turtle. All right, let's fight the turtles. Oh, broke something again. <laughs> uh oh. Been breaking things all over the place. Jeez, Bjorn. You're a wrecking ball. Super oh, yeah. shiny room. All right. Yeah, it's not, yeah, it's distracting, yeah. but not super distracting. Like I think I need to like yeah. the dirt's the gonna thing help. Is, yeah. uh, the th so the thing I'll say is it's yeah. it is not a gameplay concern for me. Okay. Whoa! I move like really fast. That's weird. <laughs> wow! Why am I going so fast and sliding around through stuff? <laughs> you really broke something. Yeah. I reloaded the level. I should be fine. I don't know. Yeah. And I can, like, go through the wall? Whoa. <laughs> if 
but not I don't fall off the floor when I go through the wall. This is bizarre. But yes, yeah, the thing I'd say, Jacques, is if if you want to tone it down, it yeah. do it for artistic reasons. Don't do it for gameplay yeah. reasons. I'm not concerned right. at this point. Alright. Cause like, yeah, the the turtles stand out enough. All of the abilities, like my projectiles, their projectiles, all stand out quite a bit from the floor. So they're gonna stand out a lot more once I get the rim. Oh, you can yeah. kind of see the rim light on there now. Why? Why? Why uh, now? Yeah. There's a rim light on the turtles. Oh yeah. You see that? So that was. I don't know why. Why it just kind of turned on recently. The, the character, the main player character, is supposed to have that too. It's like a backlight. It's supposed to be like a really strong backlight, and that's kind of that helps them stand out a lot. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> you stopped uh, going through the walls now. Yeah, because I dodged. <laughs> I was like probably <laughs> stuck in a dodge state or something. Uber dodge. Yeah. Now I'm moving to the right speed. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I, I don't have trouble focusing on what I need to in combat. Yeah. At all. Yeah, but as as like, let's say we have a Twitch stream of this, mm -hmm. and <laughs> someone's playing it, and other people have to watch it. it that's another mm -hmm. thing I'm sort of concerned about, maybe, but. Maybe we'll worry about later. The uh, because I, I then again, like, what do I know? Like when I play StarCraft, most people have no idea what's going on. No. Yeah. Yeah, unless you've played the game. Yeah, Dota Two. Mm -hmm. Nobody has no idea what's going on. So. Yeah, and like even. Are oh, you trapped? Yeah, I oh, know. Just oh, turtles no. got your number. Well, I can block. I'm blocking. I'm blocking it. Ah, there we go. I'm out. Nah. Yeah. Like, I... It's definitely... Hmm. How can I say this? It's oh, definitely... Something with the, the uh... amount of time it would take for somebody to understand what was going on it might be a yeah. bit longer. It might be quicker if you do... If you, like, tone it down so it's... There's a very stark <laughs> contrast between the... Uh... Or, like, yeah. basically the floor is ostensibly, like, a 50% gray and then all the action is... Yeah, much higher contrast, but like, yeah, I don't think it would take long for it to like settle in. Like, oh yeah, this is yeah, yeah, this is what's going on. Because like, the color of the player's projectiles, the way the player yeah. moves, very different. There's something yeah. going on with the the <laughs> with the post processing because it's just getting brighter and brighter the longer you play. <laughs> yeah. Because I think yeah. that, that was like a, the default. Because I think so part it's... of it is it depends on what percentage of the screen is black. Because if more of the screen is black, then it it changes the dynamic range of the camera. Yeah, I think. But I think there's a setting in the post processing that I I flagged off a long time ago. But I don't. I think. You know, it's weird that it went back to it. It's kind of an annoying thing to deal with because you don't really see it at first, and it's over time. I think it's a default setting of the post processing volume. So I, I haven't gone in and tinkered with it yet. Yeah. Okay. Well, what? Because uh, where is the post processing volume? Is it in the dungeon room? Yeah, it's in the dungeon room. But I, I don't even know if I have it there. I, I had it on the one of the earlier versions that you had, but I don't mm. know if it's there anymore. Okay. And I'm, I'm not too worried about it because it's just a post processing volume, right? Like it's just something. Once I kind of get one done, I'll get, I'll just kind of duplicate it across all of the other ones. But it, yeah. Oh yeah, that's another thing that helps readability is those hit pauses I put in. Mm -hmm. So it like pauses when you hit stuff. That's really good. Yeah. I love the triple slam when it does that. Like, Yeah. Yeah. I love I the really... feeling of that, the controller feeling. Yeah, adds a lot. The thousand pokes, though, I don't know. Yeah. Feels weird. That, that actually pauses. might get kind of annoying with four players, too. Yeah. The uh, which? The thousand pokes, like that much stuttering. Oh. It's well, a, it, only affects, about... it only affects you and the person you're hitting. Oh, okay. I, I yeah, love it doesn't pause the... the entire game. Like, if somebody's throwing a projectile, yeah. you're paused in place. <laughs> and the projectile keeps moving. I love it because like it reminds me of the E Honda thing where you know the E Honda yeah. thousand slaps, yeah. thousand palm or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. 
for the Chun Li, which is not as usable. The E Honda one is overpowered, like it's overpowered oh, yeah. to hell. I remember yeah, so many people just run. like I couldn't get past it. <laughs> it like... I was uh I played top I was top ten Xbox Live Arcade using E Honda. <laughs> so, <laughs> You're that bastard! <laughs> so I brutally cheap, like just people talk about how there's no throw priorities in that game. There's throw priorities for sure. Like, <laughs> like I'll trap you to corner and throw you. Let's see if you can get out. <laughs> like you can't, because I will throw you. <laughs> like it's <laughs> I think it was Nino. Nino was telling me that there was no throw priority. I'm like, yeah, there definitely is a throw priority. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to think, like, yeah, I don't know how I feel about the pause on the Thousand Pokes. Maybe it should just be a shorter pause? Maybe. I, I like, like the pause a lot. I like the pause for the readability and the, uh, and the feel. The thing is, I, lo I like the pause, too. Maybe it's the animation, maybe. But it's yeah. just, like, it breaks the feeling of it having that big a pause yeah. on the Thousand Pokes, I feel like. Maybe, uh, maybe fewer pauses and more damage or something. Hmm? Maybe mm -hmm. fewer pauses and have can, them longer. Can or... you can you time the like screen shake to each hit? Yeah, I think. Did I not do that? Because hmm. there is, I can't remember all the things I put screen shake for. If I don't have screen shake on a hit, I should. If it's there, it's really subtle. Yeah, yeah, there's a screen shake when you hit stuff. It's pretty subtle. Yeah, it is a bit subtle. I think the pausing is just maybe a bit much for that attack. Make it a bit more subtle. Mm. Yeah, I'll take a look, because the, uh... Did anybody take it out? Jack, could you write that down somewhere? Uh, pause? Yeah, look at that. Do hit pause. Yeah, I don't know if I want more camera shake. I'll, I'll just send case. you a Slack message. <laughs> yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, I suppose if you go, I don't know. What do you do? You, what do you guys think? Camera shake on the uh, on hits is like too much or too subtle? Or... I think the the camera shake's okay. It's just the the pausing is too long. Oh god. Yeah, I think I it's too it long depends, or too, like, too many. Because the thing is, I think, I, I re well, the other thing is the pause is different, a different duration depending on who you're hitting. If you hit a medium guy, it's one size. If you hit a small guy, it's much shorter. If you hit a big guy, it's way longer. Should the mm. pause be related to how much damage you deal? Uh, could be. Yeah, I thought it'd be like. I thought it would be like, okay, you do some damage, it's fine. If you do a lot of damage, the screen shakes a little. If you do even more damage, the screen shakes and there's a pause. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I could look at that. That could work. There was, I know that the uh, in Ragnarok Online, they they had the pause for the crits. Oh, okay. Basically, yeah. I don't. Know. The thing is, I like. I'm not with you on this. I kind of like the pause for some reason. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, the, so the thing is, like, the, so the pause, uh, the the one yeah. I'm most one I'm one I'm most worried about is on the thousand posts. Yeah. Are you okay yeah. with that one? That's the one I think. That's is the one I, I like the most. I, that's I, what you like the most. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It makes it feel more powerful to me personally. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and and of course, it gives you that small window of invulnerability because you can't get hit when you're paused, right? Oof, I can't remember. I think, yeah, I don't think you yeah. can, but you're paused. The amount of time you're paused for, like, a projectile Ooh. would not go through you. A projectile would probably Ooh. still hit you. Although, Ooh. yeah. <laughs> that flattens hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I find that when the spin attack, you get those pauses when you have, like, a, like a crowd of enemies. So when you do the spin attack, you get like a... Uh, yeah, find that, that I... The, the spin point. attack I really like, where you have a crowd of enemies. And it's like, yeah. Because it's very gratifying, like, when you get that... Ding, 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 yeah. Ding, ding, yeah! You get the, the slight rumble of the controller, it's, it's really... Yep. Good. Yeah. Yeah, the feel... Like, I think... 
it's been a long lot of time polishing the feel and i really yeah. like i i like the feel for it now yeah mm -hmm. okay so i guess i guess i don't need to do, to fix the pause with the fast folks thing <laughs> just leave it in for now yeah i think I, what we'll I, do i like when, it a lot when, when we get an animator though because like right now it's kind of ooh, can't even do it what i want ah it's blocking yeah, like that. <laughs> that yeah, like I think, I think it should be more focused though. Right now, it yeah. seems, yeah. it seems to hit too big of an arc, and it looks odd when mm -hmm. some of the pauses that you get. I think. Yeah. I think right now the crits are supposed to just be like a, like the entire character flashes white, but I think uh, mm -hmm. I'll probably really amp that up. So that when you crit, it'll be like they flash white for like a second, and you know, and then they'll turn blue almost. <laughs> it'll it'll read a lot more. So right now you see the the white flash there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I like. I don't know how often I'm kind of critting be... actually, because like, yeah, I don't think we have good feedback for crits right now. No, right, not right now. I'm I'm probably gonna have to like yeah. play an effect with like like the little explosive boom and. The... Yeah, because I, I think really one of the only things is uh, the. Uh, I can't even tell where I am because the camera's shaking so much. I think a lot of that's the uh, the effects I'm using for the the buffs, though. Mm -hmm. That obscures a lot. But um, what uh, what was I gonna say? Lost my train of thought. Uh, Multitasking, thinking while trying not to die. Yeah, yeah. What are the only <laughs> tech, what are the only pieces of feedback we have right now for the for a crit is the number that pops up above their head oh like i got a crit there because it, it doubles in size yeah maybe i should make it like triple in size so it's super obvious oh no let me let me do a, a pass Perfect. on the shaders and effects before you worry about stuff uh, like that yeah yeah it, 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 it'd be nice if you could actually this, but... feel it without without get a feel oh boy yeah i gotta do something about the uh the actually you know what i'm gonna do that right now Where's the particle Some of those effect auras for or... buffs? Because uh, the particle effect we use for uh, buffing... Uh, like, there's a musician in there, and he buffs all of the characters. I don't know what buff those characters have, but the little part with the red stuff on it is the effects that they get when they are buffed. And it's just too much. I'll probably do like a Actually, TF2 medic thing where it's a, like the pluses kind of go over their heads and just kind of yeah. see their. The thing is, I want to do a pass. Yeah, I'm trying to think, because I kind of want to do a pass where, let's see, status effects, auras, let's just take a look at this and see. Let's see, so status effect, bonus armor. All right, so. What are all of the, yeah, here we go. So like, it's that. And really, like, it should almost be obvious without the particle effect what's happening. Like if their attack speed is up, their animation should be playing at a way faster pace. But I just need something way more subtle. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to tell how subtle any of these are. Let's take a quick look. Uh, third party particle systems. What do we got? Let's see, charge weapon ice long. Let's see what that looks like. Nope, that one doesn't loop. Chicken eye idle. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I think that might be a bit too small. <laughs> Forge master cold breath. What's this look like? Oof. Complete. Just a little, uh, little puff. <laughs> yeah, something that, yeah, I mean, if they're smoking. Mm. 
No. Elemental fire medium. What's this look like? I think that might actually work. What's the large one look like? It's not bad. It's got just a little a few... some sparks on it too. Yeah, just something like super simple. Just needs to signify like. Uh... Yeah, let's do that. Bonus armor. All right. And you are that. Copy that. We gotta put it on their head too. Head. Although that's pro. Oh, we gotta connect to source control. And where's my browser? All right, I gotta go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Okay. So let's see. Actually, go to this and then look at. Reference. All right, so these. So it's bonus attack. Fix that in. Bonus health. Fix that in. Bonus melee. Fix that in. New speeds. Well, it's empty. Not facing it anymore. Hmm. It's weird that that face and stuff working. All right, I'm back. All right. Is they working yet? <laughs> uh, I'm just making sure I apply it to all of the buffs. And last one. Or all of the buffs that it was used on, I should say. I'm not even sure if head is the right name for the socket. I'm guessing it is. Or why it wouldn't be. Why wouldn't I have a socket called head? That would just be silly. Okay, that's good. No, wait. Go. Good. All right. Let's see if that is the even the right effects, the right buffs that I was applying that to effects. see this hmm? what kind of a this is funny because i haven't really thought a whole lot about what i want the buffs to actually look like yeah i thought that they i i part of me likes how they handle them in diablo and warcraft mm -hmm. warcraft 3 
but I wonder if that's a little too uh well I like it because it's it's very obvious, you know. Yeah. Well you need to be able to tell. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing that thing again. (laughs) Dodge for your life. Oh my god, he didn't even see me. Now he can after you dodged. (laughs) Yep. Alright. I'm not seeing any buffs. Is yeah. this the next wave? Well, nobody spawned it. Yeah. That point. No, no. Hmm. What's up? This room had guys with buffs before. Oh, wait. I think that guy. Oh, no. That's not a guy. That's just a, it's just a health pickup. What happened to the backlight on the characters? It might be oh, a per room know. thing. Maybe. It might be a, a per room thing. It's a directional light, just kind of adjacent, like coming kind of from the top of the screen, basically parallel to the floor. So. Oh, because this room is random. So I want, I'll do turtle mm. with epic. Uh, this regular guys. Yeah, because I think it might be one of those things where, like, uh, only... Oh, uh, no, what's going on? Somebody thinks it's breaking. Can't get through. Oh, man. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, that's interesting. It must have something to do with me because I, I wasn't doing it when I was upstairs. I only started doing it when I was downstairs. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. You can kind of see a few things in their on their heads. Yeah. Not really. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely way I... more subtle. I think I'm going to go with the uh, Diablo aura unless I can think of something different. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, I think. well, the thing is, okay, so honestly, yeah. I think... Hmm, I'm trying to like, find a guy that has it. Maybe I need something. Like, if I scaled it up a bit, it might be better. But it is, like... I do yeah, kinda they're kind of like... sparkling, but that's it. Yeah, it's a yeah. bit of sparkling. I think, it, I think if I scale it up a bit, it might be a bit better. But the other thing is... Um, now the like radius thing is just way too much, which it always was anyway. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, oh, what yeah, happened to the other Phil, anyways? Hmm? What happened to the other Phil? Uh, oh. I think he got a full time job, so he's only helping us out like when he has free time now. Oh okay. You know, yeah. Well, at least he got a job. That's good. Yeah. 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 Don't, honestly, don't worry too much about the the buffs. Like, I'm probably gonna redo. Oh yeah, yeah. I just it, I just don't want something that's like yeah. It, yeah. It's fine for now. If anything, the auras yeah. could probably use a change, but yeah. Because, uh, just because I don't, like, that, more than the floor, that was way too noisy. Mm-hmm. And, like, did actually affect gameplay. Okay. Well, oh, wow, it's almost 1040. That was a good stream. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool stuff. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a good night. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Mm Mm-hmm.